to highlight what our services are, how we can give you uh, or provide you the services regarding the certifications, trainings against ISMS, information security and privacy information management systems. And definitely there will be a lot of questions. We expect a lot of questions, so we will have a session for that. I'm Khwaja Faisal Javid, working as Senior Manager Operations with SGS Pakistan for more than 28 years of experience and have come across 2000, more than 2000 third party audits in almost 50 countries around the world and have done around 6000 hours of trainings against different standards, different frameworks uh, covering cloud security, business continuity, information security, privacy, and uh, of course, these days, the AI, uh, artificial intelligence management systems. Soon we are launching that product also. And with me, uh, I have uh, my colleague, Vakas uh, Awan. He is right now a manager of uh, audits and trainings. Vakas, can you please introduce yourself? Thank you very much. Sir. Uh, good Thank afternoon you. and good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Vakas, and I've been with SES for the last 14 years. And uh, currently, uh, I'm looking after uh, all IT, GRC, information security, business continuity, and DR auditing, training, and consulting services in SES Pakistan. Uh, I've been in the industry for the last 20 years, uh, you know, working in different capacities as a consultant, as a software quality assurance person, and then an auditor and trainer for the last uh 14 years with this yes so looking forward to have an interaction with you in during this session thank you thank you thank you, Vukas. thank you very much thank you very much uh, let's start with the date why we need data protection and privacy what are the issues and what are the core concepts before we move ahead this is a video of around three three and a half or four minutes Please watch it very carefully and you will see and a lot of questions in your mind will be answered through this video and I hope they will be answered, but still something left we are here to answer. So we are running the video.
Well, so I hope uh, you have got some idea what is privacy and why it is important in this digital age where everyone is wanted to share everything everywhere on the social media without considering that their sharing of their personal information can be misused against them. And this is what you have seen in this video. Uh, this is another example. The whole country, Bulgaria, was almost hard for whole country. 7.1 million people data. Uh, the pie, it's not an apple pie or an orange pie. It's a pie means personally identifiable information, PII. Of 5 million individuals or citizens were leaked on the social media. And that was around 21 GB of data. And you can see what was exactly leaked out. That even the tax returns, the addresses, the name, the salaries, everything was on, 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 the, on the stick. And these are some cases which I have selected out of many, which after the GDPR, uh, they are the people who have been badly hit by fines due to the leakages of the personal data from their organization. They were unable to protect it. Equifax is a financial organization. They were unable to protect and they, they lost 150 million people's names, their credit card numbers, social security numbers. And you can imagine what could be done if you have this kind of a data from the dark web. And they were fined for 575 million and very basic security issues were found after the investigation was completed. And that's what I'm saying that security, uh, privacy without security is nothing. Then uh, British Airways, they also lost around 50,000 customers data. And you, you know, in airways, whenever you book tickets, you share a lot of information, including your passports and, and other information. And they were fined for 230 million. Uber, they lost their drivers and their customers' data in a huge breach of around 600, 600 drivers, 600,000 drivers, I would say, and 57 million customers. Marriott is uh, Marriott and Uber are unfortunately the two. Uh, the two area, uh, poor companies uh, which have to fight against this disaster twice or thrice in the last two, five or six years. And they also had a similar incidents. But the two interesting incidents I would like to share is the Facebook. They were given the highest fine of five billion. And you know the most popular uh, Cambridge Analytica scam which emerged during the 2016 elections in the US elections to influence the voters to go for a certain candidate. And H&M is another case which is very important and very um, what you call interesting to know that they were recording all the individuals coming back from their vacation, whatever the conversation with the manager, it was recorded and it was kept on the on the on the on the on the, on the, on the network. And 60 GB of that recording were sold into the dark web. It was an insider leak, and you can imagine if you record someone today without informing that the meeting is being recorded, is considered to be a crime. Similarly, whenever you see somewhere the camera, it is required that you must caution the individuals that there is being recording going on. Although you, the camera is not connected at that particular time, but it, it is a requirement that you have to inform certain uh, these kind of checks. And similarly, to these days, the AI tools which are, we are blindly using, there are a lot of AI tools which are malicious which are capturing your personal information. You are using it for making your, you putting up filters on your on, on, on your faces, you're changing your faces, but actually you are uploading the picture onto that. Another example, a lot of free websites which are offering you to convert your document from PDF to Word or PowerPoint. So ultimately you are uploading your document and that document might contain a lot of piles. So this is all examples of privacy breach and how much it costs and why it happened. And this is the reason why it happens. 
it has been estimated a very interesting survey that around every employee have an access of to 11 million files which he never used them but he has the access and somebody if he has hacked his account he has everything in his control 66 percent of companies they have 1000 sensitive files open to every employee they can have access 70 percent of sensitive data is stale stale means not no more needed but why it is lying on the network and why almost 60 percent employees are having access to it so the and and it was found that 40 percent accounts are ghost accounts nobody <laughs> and i am using another three accounts for example but it is it, the employee has left the organization where accounts are still active and he might have a privilege access which i don't have so i can access his account use his account to get those accesses now let's discuss first what is information we are talking about information security so it is basically information is nothing it's meaningful data you generate a lot of data from everywhere but until unless that data is being tabulated in certain form it cannot become an information because we cannot extract something meaningful out of it when you convert it into information that information is critical that information needs protection now this is the example of a general data can you get anything out of it i cannot until unless there is some associated uh, what you call numbers or associated acronyms or associated alias where we can ad easily identify what this number means it's a passport number or telephone number or whatever so that is the information and this combination of this number and this uh, the title is basically the information which should be protected and what is there to protect what is information security it's basically the preservation of three things anybody can put it in the chat three things what are those three things those are confidentiality integrity and availability we call it cia not the american cia of course it is c for in confidentiality that only authorized people have access to the information integrity is the information remains saying the same form it was originally uh, created it should not be changed updated or uh, removed and availability is information is available whenever it is required to the authorized person to the level it is intended to be available so these are the three things within the information which we are trying to protect and that protection is called information security so let's have another poll I will not keep on talking. We are not going to keep keep on talking. We want you to participate also. So another question coming onto your screen. What is privacy? I have explained you what is security, information security. So what is information privacy? There are options given. The protection of personal information from unauthorized access, the ability to control one's personal information and keep it on confidential, the right to be left alone, free from surveillance, all of the above. Let's see. OK, I'm getting. 63 percent. I guess one one of the category I'm not going to disclose right now because I'm getting some answers still. OK, we got 60% all of the above. 
And uh, second is the A, which is protection of personal information from unauthorized access. Plus the ability to control one's information to keep it confidential. Plus the right to be left alone, free from surveillance. So actual answer is these are all applicable. These are all the rights of an individual, as I explained in my intro, that these are the rights of an individual, fundamental rights that he should be left alone. No surveillance. Nobody is building his profile, what he has posted on Facebook, what he has posted on Twitter, what he has posted uh, on uh, LinkedIn. You Nobody should be building a profile to know his preferences and start sending him or her information or something which is not needed. So all of the above is the basically the privacy is a protection of all of the above. Now let's discuss in more detail what exactly privacy is. What is PII and why we protect it? Any information that can be attributed to identify a, an individual, a natural person, we call it PI principle. PII principle. It's you or me. To whom such information relates or might be directly or indirectly linked is called PI principle. And this information which can be linked is called PI, PII. And if you lose that information, if you lose your credentials, if you lose your credentials plus your bank accounts plus your credit card numbers, what will happen? You, even you lose your credit, uh, your identity card numbers, the, the social security numbers, an account can be created, fake accounts can be created, the cards can be used to, to, for, uh, on, to buy something on your name, or your emails can be hacked to send some, someone an obnoxious email which you have never sent, or your social media account has been taken up because you have shared your credentials on a malicious website and they used it to hack to your social media accounts, whether it's a Facebook or Twitter, and start tweeting as you being doing it. And you can obviously see the conse consequences. So what constitutes a pie? Pi is basically your name, your email address, your location data, which we are happily sharing. Uh, hey, I'm flying towards Jordan. I'm going to Australia. I'm landing. I'm traveling. I am, I am on the road. I am in the hotel. I'm in the room number this. So everything you are sharing plus your location is being tracked. So this is what your personal information is. Your IP address, even the technical address from which your uh, computer is linked to the internet is also or the network. Cookies data, when you visit a website, they keep track of what you are doing. When you are clicking on the browser, if their cookie is being downloaded and they can extract certain information to verify your preferences to send you emails in the, at a later stage. So they are maliciously used. They are uh, also uh, they are very much needed as a, as a, a good gesture, but mostly being maliciously used. RFID tags. And on the other side, we have sensitive personal data, which is more critical for you, your health data. Nobody wants that their health data being shared within the organization amongst different employees. Your genetic data, biometric, uh, racial, ethnic, political, and religious beliefs, all are more sensitive data, which reflects your preferences. And these two combined can be maliciously used to harm you. And wherever you are collecting it on behalf of your customers, employees, you need to abide by certain rules for processing them, using them, and storing them. Let's have another question, very, very important question, so that you can understand what this topic is all about. I have almost explained what is the difference between privacy and security, but let's see what you understand. What is the difference? 
Privacy is concerned with the protection of what? And security is protection of what? The answer is on your screen. Select the options. Some people are typing in the chat box, but there are answers on the screen. So we have a few answers. Privacy is concerned with the protection of personal information while security refers to the overall security of all types of data. Privacy focuses only on access to personal information while security details the with safeguarding data against unauthorized use. So I got 65% of the people answer A. And that's very much near. Even B is very, very near, but A is the right answer. Privacy is the protection of personal information by security. Very simple. Security is covering all types of information. And you know, other informations are exist. Financial information, your, your uh, what you call uh, operational information, and then of course the personal informations and security is meant to protect every type of information but in privacy we are more focusing on to the personal information i hope now it's clear uh, certain questions in your mind to further clarify this is what security is as i've already explained i think uh, very clearly that there are a lot of controls you can put in, in the in the security controls like encryption, activity monitoring of the individuals who are accessing the internet, uh, multi-factor authentication, which you use in in, in your uh, Outlook when you or any access online when you uh, access an account, they don't only ask you for the password; they send you a code, and that is the second authentication. First authentication that you are you is the is the password. And if you lose the password, still nobody can access it because the second authentication is that they will send a code onto your registered mobile or email and you have to enter that code. This is called multi-factor authentication. So this is also one of the security controls. I know most of the people are familiar, but in my audience, some people are new to this concept. So we are just giving some explanation on that. So these are all security controls. And on the other hand, privacy is concerned with proper handling, processing, and storage of personal usage of personal information. And this is the end to protect the rights of the individual. And we will discuss what are the rights of individual that GDPR has given, and that has been applicable to all types of global standards, or more or less the same rights have been uh, governed. So whenever you collect the data of the person, you must have a legitimate reason behind it, and you must inform the individual that why you are collecting it. And if I don't want to for you to collect it, you should give me the option to opt out, and that option must work. Unfortunately, even if you select unsubscribe, you still get uh, in, uh, emails. Uh, that is something the lacking in the system, which is not putting you offline so that no email, further emails are sent to you once you have unsubscribed to any site. And this is what I have explained. Security doesn't mean privacy. If you have a grill on the window, same example, anybody can sneak in, can see what is happening in your in your home if, if until unless you put a curtain on it. So security plus the curtain will bring privacy also. Now why data protection and privacy as an organization? Why are you sure your organization should be worried? What are the points which you are worried about? What data you hold? Who have access to that particular personal data? Where it is lying in your organization? And do you know how you will protect that? That is again, all types of data, but focus on the data which is 
more or less your personal data and personal data of your employees is also not only the customer's personal data, but your employee's personal data is also considered to be uh, protected, to be to be pro protected through appropriate controls. And you need to know how you are going to manage the consents of data subjects or, da or the data principles or the PI principles. That is very simple example I can give in, in SGS. We were used to, we used to send emails openly to anyone. We have a database of around, let's say, 30,000 individuals. Wherever we get the email account, uh, the email number, uh, email address, we were using it. Uh, I think it's around eight years back. Uh, but then this privacy laws came in. So we are not supposed to send emails to anyone until unless we have a legitimate consent from his side or he subscribes to our uh, emails. Otherwise, he can easily sue any organization that you I once I have not uh, once I have put it out of your email uh, what you call uh, software you should be not sending any emails to me. So this is something which uh, which calls consent most critical thing and most difficult to maintain as an evidence and this is what the GDPR and all the global legislation are requiring. And now very important definition very clearly so that you can understand what exactly we are talking about. What is personal information? It is the type of information digital or non-digital which is available again uh, for you for your personal for as a data subject as an individual. Personal data. You might have not heard this word or some people might know about it definitely. This is something which is this information points towards you. Points towards me. Like your search is on the Internet. You are searching a lot of information on Internet and this can be seen in, in YouTube or any other channel. If you search something, you will start getting getting a lot of other information regarding the same topic and that is basically you your digital life, we call it D life, your personal datum D life, which is your digital logo or digital log of whatever you are doing throughout the Internet. So this is what uh, datum is. That datum can also be used to see what you are preferring, what you want, what you are looking for, and they try to exploit that in order to build your profile. Data subject or PI principle is some someone whose PI is being discussed, me or you. Sensitive data, I have already said more protection, like your, your, your personal medical data, uh, your political beliefs, your uh, religious beliefs, all this is sensitive. And finally, the PI we have already discussed, that information which can create a link between you and that particular and uh, information you as a natural person and that information which is every any uh, existing anywhere. So these are very important definitions which you should keep in mind. Another two very important thing because this standard is based on these two. What is a data controller and what is the data processor? A data controller is one who is basically responsible who is collecting the data and he has to abide by all the rules set under the GDPR Article 5. So GDPR is focusing on two, these two kind of individuals or organizations which are holding or processing your data in different forms and different uh, ways. So they are the people who decide why and they should know why they are collecting the data and how they are going to process it, what means they are using it. So they are the person who have to dis display compliance against the, the principles and those principles include lawfulness, that you should be lawfully collecting it, not uh, what you call tricking on the individuals to get their data. And you should fairly and transparently telling them why you are collecting it and where you are going to using it, use it and you should collect the minimized data, means data minimization, only the data which you need, not more than that. And it should be accurate. It should be stored in a limited time period for a limited time period and confidentiality has to be ensured. So these are the principles which the controller has to follow. 
And now the data controller might sublet the data to another organization for processing it. It is called data processor. He is bound by the contract and he has to ensure whatever the data controller is telling him and how they are going to process, they have to process in that way. A very simple example I can I can give you. You, you are collecting the data from your website. People are subscribing to your newsletters or you are collecting, uh, have outsourced something to another organization using SurveyMonkey. And the SurveyMonkey is collecting the data and plus on your behalf. Or you can outsource to a data analytical company that whatever the people or whoever are subscribing to my uh, newsletter, please analyze who are those people from which sector they are. So this analysis is being done by a data processing company. Now they are becoming the processors and you are the controller. Even the processor itself, this processor itself can be a data controller also because they are keeping the data of their employees. So they are liable to protect the data of their employees as a controller. But in a simple example, I have given you what is the difference between controller and processor. And these are some vulnerabilities uh, related to privacy, like an employee leaving the patient record in anywhere which is easily viewable, passwords not being required at the customer database access, smartphones do not have passwords or do not require passwords, Customer loan files, hard copies are left unlocked. Uh, hard copies of patient files in the public dumpsters, which I, we have seen, unfortunately. A credit union or a bank, they have sold their desktop computer with a hard drive in it without removing the personal data, although they must remove all types of data, but personal data, and we are talking right now, it is more critical, so they have to remove the pie from it. A USB drive, you know what are the threats to the USBs. If you lose a USB apart from the personal data, you can you can lose a lot of files. Let's have another question and moving forward. So we have. Uh, what are the main types of data that require protection? Very really interesting question. I think most of you already should know the answer. Let's see. Let's see how many people are following the presentation. I'm expecting 100%. <laughs> so let's see. OK, I'm very near to my target. That is right now I reach it 98%. Very good responses. All right, so I was very near 98 out of 100. So good. <laughs> so overall, whatever responses we got around 120, we uh, or, yeah, we are still getting it. Let's let's see. All right, 98% is the final, and that is all of the above. We are protecting all types of data, but since we are focusing right now on the privacy, so that's why personal data is also one of the main data which needs to be protected. But overall, organization is responsible to protect all types of data. So all of the above is the right answer. Well done. So now coming to the global legislations. There are 137 countries around the world, according to the United Nations recent report. The link is there. Out of 194 countries, 137 have privacy legislation done. This is a huge percentage of 71%. 15% uh, have no legislation till date. 9% had it in a draft legislations, and unfortunately, 5% have no data 
at all to go for such legislation or uh, work on such uh, areas. So this is something which creates an alarming situation globally. So any organization which is operating in those countries where the legislation exists or their client or that citizen from that country is sharing the data with another country where the legislation doesn't exist still that company can get uh, be, uh, uh, what you call under the legal uh, proceedings because the citizen of that particular country has data has been breached. This is very specific to GDPR and if you go to the DPA, DBAs, the data protection uh, acts on different countries, almost they have the similar clause. Now, what is the link between these two? GDPR first, uh, it is the most important uh, EU uh, to regulation, and it has brought the revolution in this in this understanding of the people about their rights of uh, fundamental rights of uh, privacy. And it was uh, it emerged back in in to, on 25th of May 2018. And since then, many companies, even big, big organizations are getting fined because of the breach of the GDPR. Now, 27701 is something which is having a clear mapping of the GDPR articles with the clauses, and it helps you better understand the, the GDPR requirements. So it's like you have a system in place where you can build upon all types of legislations. But if you don't have a 27001 standard or 27701, so definitely it's very, very difficult to deploy the data protection acts of your countries, which are legislative, which are mandatory. So some some more information about GDPR. The biggest thing is the fine. It's a 4% of your revenue of the turnover. It's, it's global turnover. So you can imagine the fines I've showed you. This is nothing if you if you go to the details that how many organization in the European Union are being fined. So the, it, it emphasizes the right to be forgotten that if I have shared the data with you, I have all the rights to ask you to delete my data and you are bound to do it wherever you are storing it. Whether you are storing it on the cloud, whether you are processing into your systems, you have to delete it and you have to ensure it is not being existing in your organization. Consent is the more emphasized area over here. Secondly, very important point which I would like to highlight. It says privacy by design and privacy by default that you need to build privacy within your application, within you whenever you are designing a new software. These days every software is an AI based and we don't know what is AI. It's in some cases, by the way. So even if you are collecting information for processing, you need to have built in control in the design of the software. The data which is related to the personal information is being masked whenever it is entered and it cannot be accessed by beyond it is required. It, there must be controls within the application of the software right from the design and by the default. And these are the six very important principles you should know about data processing, the lawfulness and fairness and transparency, then the purpose limitation that you need to have to restrict to the purpose for where for which you are collecting the data. Just give you an example, any organization which is collecting the data for surveys in, in the shopping malls and they are collecting your phone numbers, your names, your email addresses, you have the right to ask the question why? Because you only need the data about your question. Whatever your question you are asking, that is enough if I'm responding to it. I'm not liable to share with you my personal information. And even if they insist, they must tell you when they, where they will use it and when they will destroy it, how they will destroy it and after how long they will destroy it. So this is the purpose limitation. Data minimization is that you should be collecting only that information that is required. It should be accurate, that is accuracy. You need to always keep updated information about myself if you want to keep it. It should be stored for a certain period of time and very importantly, it should be confidentially maintained. Confidentiality of the inf information is maintained and unfortunately or fortunately, above five principles cannot be 
secured by IT or security technologies. You need to have very elaborated policies to and adherence to those policies to get these things, these principles implemented. And these are the eight rights of the individual or the PI, PI principle, or the person who is basically uh, sharing his information with you. He has the right to know the purpose. He has the right to be informed where you are going to use it beyond what was allowed. He has the right to be forgotten that you should be deleting his information whenever he wants you to delete it. And there should be no profiling done. You should not be using my information to profile about myself. What are my preferences and what are my uh, likings? Right to withdraw my previous consent. I should have the right to withdraw the previous consent. You cannot object that once you have given the consent, it is for lifetime. No, I can withdraw. Right to object the processing when it. I can object the processing of my personal information when it is unfair or I feel it unlawful. Request right to request the correction or deletion, and finally right to access, review, and being informed about the processing. I can create a request with you that where you are using my personal information right now and how much it is being used and where it is being used. Very important thing, which is when you ask for uh, the request for correction and deletion, the, this is something the organization has to disclose, that if it was collected on the printed form, when it was shredded, that evidence must be maintained. So you, the clause goes to that level. So that's why many organizations these days are restricting back in order to not to get the personal information in the personal in the service business service. And the consent must be freely given. It should be well informed. It should be unambiguous. I have recently audited an organization. They have a, a cookie policy that when whenever somebody visits their website, they have a policy displayed that we whatever information we are collecting will be used for this purpose. And if you switch this off to collect this personal information, information at the back end, you will lose these 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 features. So that means you are bounding them to use the features in order to use the features to give them the authority to use your personal information, which is against the law. You should be freely giving them the option. That's why these days whenever you visit a website, it, it will give you three options, whether you allow them to use your personal information for an analysis, whether you allow them to use it for that purpose or that purpose, whatever purposes they want, they give you options. Otherwise, in the before GDPR, you only get one one link that you accept all or you reject all. But now you have the options that why they are collecting that information and where they are going to use it. You can select or deselect those informations. Now let's have two very quick uh, questions, uh, scenarios. She may she asked me to remove her information from our systems, but it required for regulatory reasons, so I refused. Whether it's a breach or a no breach, uh, whatever I have explained to you, do you think it's a breach or no breach? This, the, the question coming onto your screen. Yeah, you get the question. It's a breach or not a breach. Mm, very interesting. I think I mentioned the point the lawful purpose and if the regulatory or the laws regulatory authorities are asking to keep the data with you like telephone operators or uh, any other such organization which is keeping your information for the security purposes that bound to be kept you cannot delete it on the request of the individual so this is something which we need to make sure it's not a breach in this case because, and we got almost 50-50 answer, uh, 
because it's required for regulatory reasons, right? This is very, very important for you to note down. Any information which has to be retained as per the law or of the land or the regulatory reasons, you cannot, as an organization, cannot delete it on the request of the individual whose information is being kept. Another question. At first, he gave us his consent to use his data, but then he changed his mind. I told him that it wasn't allowed. Should you allow or not allow? He gave you the consent initially, but he, does, he wants you to get rid of it. I'm no more interested to keep my data with you. I'm no more interested to have you using my data. Excellent, excellent. Everyone is attending. That shows the interest. Good. Ninety percent of the people have said it's a breach. Yes, it's a breach because you. I just showed you the rights. If I have given the consent, I have all the rights until unless there are legal requirements, you have to delete my data. So it's a breach if you refuse. So these are some common terms. You should know the difference between GDPR and uh, the uh, true 7701. In GDPR, we call it data subject. In 27701, we call it a PI principle. Uh, personal data, we call it a PI. Privacy by design. We, you can say that GDPR use the word data protection and 27701 use the word privacy. So this is, this is the main area where you can find uh, the difference. Now coming to the quest standard, this standard was released in August 2019 and uh, it specifies the requirements uh, and the guidance together uh, for the extension of 27001 and 27002. We don't want to go in detail of these two standards. I, I, you can attend other webinars and definitely you should have information about 27001. Uh, it specifies the requirement for both the Pi controller and Pi processor, which I've already explained. Its main focus is on the, the trust. So these days, another word is being used and frameworks are emerging that is digital trust. How I can trust on my digital use of assets or the organization which are collecting my data, uh, how they are using it. It supports the laws which are being emerging. It would help you implement those laws effectively and it can be easily integrated and implemented with 27001. Rather, it is the requirement that you should be 27001 standard certified or you will implement it together. Now, this is what the scope is. 27001 scope uh, and 27701 scope, this has to be in, in line 27701 must be part or 27701 must be part of 27001 scope. It cannot be going beyond that means you cannot add 27701 for another departments and only keep 27001 for other departments. You have to have both scope extended to the all areas. Now how they are being linked? If you have already familiar with 27701, uh, 27, you can see it has clauses from 4 to 10. And these are the main clauses. And in 27701, only five clauses have been amended and some additional work has been done. In, and in the controls in Annex A of, uh, of uh, 27001, 32 of those controls out of 114 have been given some additional requirements for privacy. And then these are the two additional things which Annex A in 27701 is, co is covering the additional 31 controls for Pi processor, a Pi controller, 
and 18 controls for Pi processor. And this is overall PIMS, we call it Privacy Information Management System. The last poll before I'll, uh, I'll ask Vakas to take over, although I have taken a little bit more time, but this topic was very wide and I was facing a lot of difficulty to remove certain slides we have been discussing, but I wanted to get you the basic information and then we come to the standard so that you have the background already covered so that you can have better understanding. So this is the last poll. After this, I will hand over the stage to Vakas. I know the time is short but uh, we will try to cover the maximum areas possible. The poll question is, does your organization provide security awareness training? Now you provide security awareness training, but we are talking about privacy awareness training. This is very important for us to know and see how the people are basically understanding the concept. And by the way, Pakistan uh, government is very near to release the DPA, Data Protection Act, which is in the final stages. It has been worked on since 2016-15, and now we are coming up into a shape where it hopefully it will be one release soon. Oh, 60% are on target and they are saying that they have, uh, and we trust them, <laughs> we trust them. And so, Sokas, please take over. Thank you very much and sorry, I, I took your time. Well, thank you very much uh, for, and uh, it was a uh, nice uh, detailed uh, background about uh, privacy information management system. Uh, so what we are going to talk about now is about the structure of uh, this standard, that how this standard is working, what is the requirement structure and how the requirements are elaborated. One thing before I go into the standard, currently uh, I, I have seen a lot of people have mentioned in the chat box that ISO 27001 2022 has 93 or you know, give or take controls. Uh, this is still 2019 version ISO 27701. And it is still referring to ISO 27001-2013 version. Uh, a new version or an updated version is in the works, and most likely it would be issued uh, in this year. So 27701 referring to 27001-2022 version would be published somewhere around you know the next few months within this year, so that you know you can uh, work on that but right now since this standard is referring to 27001 2020 2013 version so we'll talk about that and it's mapping with, with that standard uh, and also 27001 2013 is still uh, an active standard till until october of 2025 so even if an organization is working towards implementation of iso 27701 2019 along with the controls of iso 27001 2013 so they are still they have time to upgrade this uh, to the newer version so uh, unlike rest of our standards which has 4 to 10 clauses uh, in, in ISO 27001 ISO 27701 is uh, referring to eight clauses uh, you know from clause number 5 and clause number 6 and clause number 7 and clause number 8 in which clause number 5 and 6 are some additional requirements on top of ISO 27001-2013 requirements, uh, which is very specific to privacy information management system and privacy part. And then clause number seven and eight, which talks about you know, additional controls and implementation guidelines for PI controllers and PI processors. And lastly, an extra A and an extra B, which has again additional control objectives for PI controllers and PI processor. So, uh, <clears throat> Unlike developing a new document for PI processor and PI controller uh, controls guidelines, they are already included in ISO 27701 uh, 2019 in clause number seven and eight. So all those controls which are listed in an extra A and an extra B, their guidelines and their potential guidance for uh, for each type of PI uh, operator, which is controller or processor or both, uh, they can be seen here in this part. 
Uh, just to give you uh, a brief about the annexures, so 27701 is a very comprehensive standard which talks about individually on uh, by controllers, by processors, and then they have an annexure which is dedicated to the mapping of ISO 27701 and GDPR. So a lot of organizations in the world are using this 27701 as a framework uh, to provide a sustainable uh, long term compliances towards all the privacy laws and uh, from which the, the, the basic one or the most uh, renowned one is GDPR. So that is why those uh, compliances or those mappings uh, of, of 27701 clauses and requirements and controls to GDPR articles is included in, in this document as an extra D. So you can always refer to this an extra if you are focusing towards GDPR compliance, but along the way you want a management system in place which can help you to continue this compliance over the period of time rather than doing it on uh, need basis or maybe on when there is an evaluation being done only. So the specific controls we were talking about, uh, which are PIMS specific controls, the PI controllers and processors. So this is how this is distributed. So there is ISO 27001 2013 already in place uh, with 114 controls of an extra A which are implemented. And now you want to extend it to PIMS and make it a PIMS. So then you have to include an extra A of ISO 27701, which has 31 controls considering if you are a PI controller. And then if you are a PI processor, then you would be applying an extra B, uh, which is which has 18 additional controls, you know, in extension to ISO 27001-2013. And if you as an organization are operating as both controller and processor, then you would be applying these both the annexures as controller and processor. But if, if there is only one which, uh, which which role you adopt as an organization, so then you will choose to apply it, the only that particular annexure, not the other one. So in total, there would be about 49 additional controls uh, if you want to implement PIMS as uh, a tool or as a, as a as a framework for your privacy compliances if your organization is a PI processor and controller in both cases. <clears throat> Now the examples uh, of these controls that how these are defined and the guidances which are given. So let's say if we talk about the risk assessment part. So usually when we are doing risk assessment, so what organization does, they are always talking about with the breach of the data, which is by the hackers or the loss of data uh, due to hard disk failure or, or USB had data and it is lost. And you know uh, if the laptop has been you know deleted or it has lost, so that is more towards the security aspect and you know the most of the organizations are usually focused on this element only whereas when we are talking about the privacy aspect so the the processing of that privacy data has to be included in your risk assessment as well considering that how these this data is sent to overseas subsidiaries or outsourced data centers the transfer part that how securely this transfer is being done and what your your outsourced data center or any other subsidiary or partner is going to do or or handle or how they are going to handle that data so that part has to be covered in your risk assessment as well because those are going to be uh, very specific risks related to privacy and use of you know cloud based softwares and then knowing that these cloud based softwares what role they are going to use and how they are using because nowadays there are a lot of cloud services which per se are looking at as software as a service, but they are operating as uh, you know on an infrastructure as a service from another company. So it is a completely cloud solution which you are acquiring. So you need to understand that how this data is going to move around within that cloud infrastructure. Similarly, for the application development, again, a very considerable part of, of a lot of industries in Pakistan who are considering and in the world who are considering privacy part and uh, you know this probably is the source where you can deploy privacy by design uh, into your applications and you know the products which are being developed. So the considerations must be that you know what are the 
the uh, special categories of the data which are going to be used as awareness element you know your developers and your design people and your you know testing people all they have to have an idea that how this is going to be done what are the categories and how they have to do this and then when the data is being stored or processed you know the the, the protection of data must be done using de-identification or pseudomization or anonymization or encryption as well, uh, you know, considering what is important for your data and how that is going to be applied. Because in most cases, like for de-identification, pseudomization and encryption, it can be recovered. However, if you are choosing anonymization, then there would be a high chance that you won't be able to recover the data to its original form. Uh, in the class seven, the additional PIMS control guidances for the PII's uh, controller. So there are about uh, you know four uh, different clauses, including 7.2 till 7.5, with these uh, areas or sections or you know uh, the, the, the subjects which are addressed by these controls. And there are a total of uh, almost 30. One controls which are talking about you know the PI controllers and the controls which have to be applied by the uh, by controllers. So this is how the controls are distributed. So we'll see an example that how this these controls are read. So if you see that these are the four areas in which the PI uh, you know, controller related controls are distributed. So every control, every area has a control objective, which here it talks about A75, which talks about you know PI sharing transfer and disclosure, which is a control objective. And within this control objective, there are four controls starting from A5.1, 5.2, 5.3 and A7.5.4. And similarly, uh, this is the control requirement. The organization shall identify and document the relevant basis of transfers of PI between ju uh, jurisdictions. So it is exactly the same structure on which as for 2007, 2001, 2013 and X-ray controls are designed. So right now you can see that that uh, that 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 structure that how these controls are uh, explained and similarly, if you go to an extra B of control objectives for PI processors, so similar in the similar way, the controls are explained. So that's how it is very, very much integratable with 27001. So once it is you know, uh, under review and when the new version is, is released, so then you would be able to map it to ISO 27001 2022. Because in that in, in, in that version, the PI controller related controls and PI processor related controls, they are going to be uh, you know, designed in a way that new version is supporting. So for the PI processors or you know, the control we talked about, the privacy considerations that you know transfer between jurisdictions. So these are the questions which you need to consider and you know you have to define a comprehensive way that how these elements are going to be discussed that you know these countries the first question is there any transfer between you know different countries or a cross-border transfer of data uh, what level level of transfer is there is it just the data or the entire database is hosted there and what are the legal bases why do you need to do uh, do this and what are the security controls in all stages of this transfer including the transfer itself and where the data is stored and then the storage element uh, as well so talking about the the PI processors, which is uh, you know clause number eight, having eighteen controls. Uh, again, there are about four sub clauses or four sections. Uh, the clauses titles are almost similar, just the differences between PI processor and PI principal. And every area like B eight point two will ha it has six controls. B eight point three has one control, and B eight point four has three controls. And lastly, B8.5 have eight controls. So these are all additional controls which uh, the organization aiming for ISO 27701 implementation and certification, they have to perform and uh, you know they have to uh, apply with that. Uh, just a quick question, a poll. Uh, probably it is the right time to ask you about the implementation and certification uh, aims of your organization towards ISO 27701. So very quickly, uh, not to take your more time, uh, we can just quickly answer this and then we can uh, move on so that information is pretty clear. So maybe size is increasing for about 47%, 50%. Okay. All right.
Why, that, that, that's that's good to know. Though. So maybe is is at least I'll consider maybe as not as no. So that's 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 quite promising that the organization would would go for uh, PIMS certification or implementation very soon. So thank you very much for the responses and. Uh, uh, just very quickly, I'll talk about uh, that how this is addressed. So, if there are, you know, uh, it is general uh, misunderstanding about 27701 that when we are talking about Pi controller and Pi processor, they have to implement all the controls uh, from NHR A and NHR B. Uh, just like in 27001 2013. Uh, from an extra A, the organization has this provision of excluding controls if they want to, if they, they, they think that the risks can be managed uh, without these controls or, you know, they, these controls are justifiably not needed by the, the organization so they can exclude. So similar uh, case is applied for ISO 27701 because the statement of applicability will remain uh, used as it is the requirement of ISO 27001. So you will you know, enhance your statement of applicability by including 27001 and an extra A and an extra B controls uh, applied appropriately. And if there are any controls which are uh, to be excluded or which are considered as exclusions, so that are required to be justified uh, just like as ISO 27001 statement of applicability. So in a nutshell, you can, you know, you know, you can conclude that there would be one single statement of applicability for uh, all ISO 27001 controls and uh, ISO 27701 controls, considering an extra A and an extra B, and uh, you know you can justify all the exclusions if they are applied uh, accordingly regarding your risk assessment as well. Uh, now, very quickly talking about the scope of ISMS and PIMS, that how uh, this this uh, these two standards are going to work together. So initially. A lot of organizations are going to be talking about the certification part. So what we are offering is we are offering you an accredited certification against ISO 27701 for all those organizations which are already certified to ISO 27001 2013. And this is irrespective that which certification body they are certified from. So if you wish to have a 27701 certification, an accredited certificate, we can offer you that certification. But uh, you know, you need to be certified on ISO 27001 either previously or you can concurrently uh, get certification towards ISO 27001 2013 and uh, for the uh, 27701. Uh, 27, and also, uh, you know, for the organization, but the only condition is that the scope of information security management system must be same or larger than your PIMS. So uh, as 27701 in the title it says it is an extension to ISO 27001 2013 version. So what you have to do and ensure is that your PIMS is your within the scope of ISMS. So the ISMS scope is going to be the outer part, and this we have already seen in a in a slide presented by Mr. Fessel. Uh, that you know it is an external uh, circle, and within that circle you will talk about your uh, privacy. So this coming up example can help you in understanding this very clearly. Uh, you know, this is your your ISMS, which is originally implemented already in your organization, and probably these are the four departments which are covered in the scope. Uh, however, sales, marketing, and customer services are not part of your ISMS. So now you want to intend or you want to implement a PIMS on these three departments as well because most of personal information from your customer or from your employees and you know other related stakeholders is coming in your sales department and marketing department and customer services department so this is how it must look like in for if you are intending to implement your PIMS so you will extend your ISMS scope to these departments as well and then from along with that you can have your PIMS applied with this so this is the scope which uh, is is going to be and how it is going to be implemented. But the key point is that you have to think that the, the ISMS scope cannot be smaller than your PIMS scope. So an ISMS has to be, uh, you know, had has to have a bigger uh, scope and PIMS would be adjusted within part because your whole of your uh, you know organization is not going to handle private information or personal information. Uh, you know, there would be certain parts of your organization who are going to be interacting with uh, per, per personal information. 
you know what the key benefits which uh, you can achieve when you implement and then certify your ISO 27001 so it can you know once the first and the foremost that it would provide you required assurances and the confidences in your, your partners can have on you and then a very clear mapping now this is going to be a very very important uh, benefit for a lot of organizations who are working with, especially with the European Union and then with with the United Kingdom as well. So that there would be, uh, uh, you know, a clear mapping between GDPR and other privacy frameworks as well, which are available in the world. And then it also reduces the complexity. You would have a very, very, uh, you know, detailed process approach towards implementation and management of your privacy uh, requirements and your privacy you know, uh, implementations. And lastly, you know, you have a very clear role defined for you that you are controller or processor or both, and there would be no confusion about that. And lastly, you know, it, it also uh, gives to help you in uh, in generating evidences and a lot of well, a very uh, comprehensive incident management process as well, that if there is a breach, what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. So a typical certification or in process flow, uh, it is uh, not very uh, much uh, uh, you know, different than the, the conventional certifications of ISO uh, and the organizations who have already gone through ISO 27001 certification. So they, 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 they are already familiar with this process. So it, it starts off with the with uh, with a commercial arrangement, obviously with the client. And then once the commercial arrangement is established, then we go for a stage one audit, which can be a desk study. And then the stage two, which is an on-site implementation audit or verification of, of all the controls, whether they have been implemented or not. And once there is no major non-conformity established during stage two, so you know we issue for a we go for an issuance of certificate. So you would be recommended for issuance of certificate to ISO 27701. And then it must be followed by at least an annual surveillance audit for the next two years. So a three year cycle is completed and then you go back into the renewal process. So you know, since this is a, a, a management system and ISO approved management system, so it follows the same certification scope or and same certification cycle of, of, of implementation and verification. So we, it, it's already uh, similar to that part. Uh, lastly, the most important aspect, uh, you know, I would like to ask you all that if you decide to implement uh, this PIMS or ISO 27701, so what in your opinion can be, you know, uh, you'll find the most challenging for your organization if this is implemented and then, uh, you know, consequently it is uh, um, certified as well. So the biggest challenge so far is the integration with the existing information security uh, uh, management systems and you know other management systems uh, in, in this. And then we have few inputs in the chat box as well uh, regarding employee training and awareness. Uh, yeah, these these are the few, uh, few challenges for information security management systems. Uh, we can uh, you know uh, help in that part as well as we are going to you know i'll be talking about those courses which we are going to launch in future as well and which would be available for you a training course and 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 helping elements to address uh, that how these can be integrated so thank you very much for the input uh yes sir if you want to say something or include something no no i, I just saw some people are uh, raising hands so kindly if you have any question, you can put in the Q&A section. We have got a lot of questions, so we will have some time, but uh, if some questions are unanswered, we will definitely get back to you on the emails you have registered. So please uh, raise your questions in the Q&A box so that we can answer them. Thank you. Right, so uh, this was about the 27,001. So now I'll just walk you very quickly through the process, through, through the services, uh, uh, which uh, you know, certification and business enhancement solutions, which SES can uh, can offer you. Uh, so we are going to be offering 
uh, you know, a, a wide range of cybersecurity solutions or cyber solutions, and this includes certification to different, uh, you know, standards, uh, including ISO 20000, which is service management, 22301, business continuity management system, 27001, and its affiliate guidelines, uh, standards, and now 27701, and then very industry specific, uh, you know, standards, which is automobile for our automobile industry, and then GDPR certification as well. Uh, which we can, uh, you know, talk about. So these are, you know, wide range of products which we are offering, uh, and then these are all certifications which are available uh, for organizations who wish to uh, reach to this. Uh, a few, uh, an, a few upcoming, uh, you know, uh, products and services which are uh, the certification towards these standards, uh, and we have a wide range of customers and certified customers, uh, hopefully, uh, for all these services uh, within the industry. Uh, lastly, uh, the, the courses which we are offering, uh, we have once again accredited and non-accredited or SCS accredited courses on almost all topics which we have touched or discussed during this session, including 27001, information security, 22301, GDPR, uh, you know, 20,000, uh, CSS star, ISO 27701, TISEX itself, and then uh, the PIMS itself will be offering uh, lead implementer and lead auditor courses very soon, and we have private, uh, you know, privacy impact analysis training as well. So it is under the works, and it would be designed very soon. Our first ever VILT is 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 already announced and will be conducted, inshallah, within uh, August um, and, and September. Uh, you know, you would be receiving notifications and information regarding all these, uh, you know, trainings and uh, all these offerings. Uh, with your, uh, you know, uh, certificates, and you can also visit our SES website all the time to get updates on this uh, element. So finally, uh, you, we have come down to 